in one form of Buddhism, of Zen Buddhism that Hakuin represented, you're given a puzzle or a conundrum or a, diff a question. They usually don't have a logical answer. So you have to come up with an answer or reply that understands you understand the Zen meaning of it. And then you're given a more difficult koan or puzzle and they, they, they go up in difficulty. The title of the show refers to a famous koan, the most famous koan, which is the sound of one hand clapping. So the sound of two hands clapping is this. The sound of one hand clapping is there's no sound. Uh, so that's a Zen koan. Now, the answer to that Zen koan is not silence. It has to be something else outside of normal rationality or, or, or common sense. Hakuin was the greatest Zen master of the last 500 years. He was a professional Zen master. He was an amateur painter. He taught Zen to many, many students, hundreds of students his whole life, and he purposely did not paint or do calligraphy until late in life because he saw it as a distraction. But around the age of 58, he started painting. His entire painting career is only 15 years long, and it's fascinating. It can kind of be broken down into five-year chunks and how much his painting and his writing, his calligraphy, changes and evolves in a way. I'm not saying it's better, it's just different. Uh, uh, it just moves from a meticulous, more carefully painted painting to something that's very broad that he could do much more quickly. So the later works, they're faster and they're more immediate and they're quicker. They directly express Zen thoughts or Zen truths. Raku wa ku no tane. Ku wa Raku no tane. Literally, in joy lie the seeds of sorrow. In sorrow lie the seeds of joy. So this is a yin yang, inyo in Japanese, going back and forth. You're never in one state, happiness and sorrow. And uh, that's a Zen precept, and he paints it beautifully here. You can see the character at the bottom, joy, is very large and very almost like a building. It's architectonic. It's beautifully constructed. It's, it's a late work and you can see that because it's got pooling and the brush strokes are thick and ropey. This is a rare work by Hakuin in that it has light color. He used color occasionally, especially in his early works. There are three figures gathered around a large jar. The jar has wine in it and the large figure directly behind the jar that's facing us is the historical Buddha. To our left is Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu is the founder of a philosophical creed, less a religion than a philosophy called Taoism. And to our right is Confucian, Confucius, who started Confucianism, which was the main governing philosophy of government through all of Chinese history and was popular in this period in Japan. Now the story here, They've all tasted the wine and they all have a smile on their face. So the idea is they all respond to the same stimulus, in this case, a jar of wine, the same way. So it means that no matter what you study, it could be Hinduism, it could be Judaism, Christianity, in this case, Taoism, Buddhism, Confucianism, at root they have the same truth. This is a very ecumenical uh, idea. The Daruma is the legendary figure who is thought to have brought what we call Zen Buddhism from India to China in the 6th century. And portraits of him are, are very common by Zen masters or Zen painters. This is a late portrait of Daruma by Hakuin. It's, it's less detailed, it's very bold, the strokes, it's very simplified. He's an, he's an Indian person originally. Daruma. So he's shown with the long ears, which was thought to be Indian, the beard, which is not Chinese or Japanese, facial hair, big nose. You know, he looks like a foreigner. The interesting thing about paintings of Daruma is they're all different. Each Zen master or painter paints a different style of Daruma. They come out looking different. And the best way to think of them is as a self-portrait of the person doing it. They're a spiritual self-portrait.